So we have a vector valued function r, r depends on x, y, and z. You put in numbers x, y, and z and you get out a vector, right? i, j, and k are just the usual basis vectors in three-dimensional space. Now this non-bold-faced r is the magnitude of this vector, okay, or the, the norm sometimes they call it of this vector. Okay, so don't be confused between the bold face. The bold face means a vector, and the non-bold face just means a number or a scalar. Okay, in this case, R, R will be a function, a real valued function of x, y, and z. And we're asked to prove the following identity involving the gradient. Okay, so the gradient, this sort of upside down triangle, which, you call, which we call nabla, or grad, or just the gradient, is an operator from vector calculus and essentially um, uh, it, it involves partial derivatives okay so before we um, uh, uh, try to come up with this let's think about what, what this means okay so by these, t these pair of two parallel lines I mean the, the magnitude of R, of the vector R. So if I was to write this down out fully, okay, what do you do? You square each of the components, you add them together and you take the square root, right? So this is just a, a function of three variables that is real valued. Okay. All right, so what does the gradient do? It takes a function, it operates, it operates on it via some partial derivatives, and your output is a vector. Okay? All right. So let's call this star. So the left-hand side of star is just the following. Okay, you're applying the um, gradient to this, this r raised to the power n. Now remember, this has already got a power 1 half. So if I combine those powers, I'll get n on 2. Okay. So what is... Uh, the gradient of this, well, you calculate the partial derivative of this with respect to x. That'll be the first component of the vector. You calculate the derivative of this with respect to y. That'll be the second component of the vector. And you calculate the d partial derivative of this with respect to z. And that'll be the third component of your vector. Okay? So let's take the partial derivative of this with respect to x. What's going to happen? The n on 2 is going to come to the front. The 2x is going to come to the front, and you decrease the power by 1. OK? OK, and that is the first component in my vector. So, you know, if I was to sort of summarise over here, if I'm, if I'm taking the gradient of a function, it's just this. Where the subscripts mean partial derivatives, right? Okay, so let's work out the next one, the partial derivative of this with respect to y. Well, it's pretty much the same as over here, except you've got a 2y out the front. And the same thing with Z. Oh, that'll be, a, that'll be the, uh, the J component, if you like, the second component. And the same thing with Z. Differentiate this with respect to Z, and that'll be your sort of K component, if you like. Okay. All right, so it looks like a bit of a mess now, but we can clean it up a little bit 
Okay, firstly, you can cancel off the twos and the halves, right? And you'll see that there's a common factor. Okay? There's essentially a common factor here. So this, this, and this can be factored out. Okay, we've got a vector now, so we can always take out a common factor that's a scalar. Alright, so if I was going to uh, take a common factor out, I could do it like this. Uh, and I've got a common factor of n too, don't I? Okay, so then I've got um, x, i, y, j, z, k. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good now. We've just got to, got to um, uh, just massage it a bit. Well, how do I do that? Well, if I put the power here over one, over the, the two, then I'll get the following. Okay, so, so this now, this is the R vector. So, so I'm just going to go to R there. Okay, now just playing with this power again, you can see that it's just this. Yeah? And what's in here, that's just, you know, square rooted. That's just that, which is that. There you go. Nice. Okay, now one of the point of that problem, I guess, is to get you playing with the, uh, the gradient operator and also helping you to distinguish between, okay, am I dealing with a vector, am I dealing with a scalar, and um, uh, just coming up with that, that result. So now I'm going to show you a way to do this problem using the chain rule for gradients. Okay, you don't have to use this method, but um, you, know, you might like it. So you can see in here that basically I'm taking the gradient of r, which is a function, to the power n. So I've got two functions here. I've got a function of a function. I've got the function r and the power function to the power n. Okay, so we know if, if gradient is a bit like a derivative, then with composition of functions, I know sometimes I can use the chain rule, right? So there is a chain rule for gradients, and I just wanted to, to share that with you, okay? So, the chain rule for gradients, or grad, is the following, okay? If I want to take the gradient of a function of a function, then how do I do it? So in, in this setting, um, I guess g would be this function here, and f would be the power function, power, power n. Okay, well, you take the gradient of g, and you multiply it scalarly by f dash. Okay, so let's look at the grade. So in our uh, example, g 
g of r is just this, right? Okay, so it's you know this this thing here, yeah, and say so f of u is u to the n. All right, so what is the gradient of this? Well, okay, well, we know how to differentiate this and write it as a vector. It's going to be the, the differentiate this with respect to x. You're going to get a 2x and a half, and you're going to get something like this. That's going to be your first component. Differentiate this with respect to y, that'll be your j component. Oh, sorry, j component. Differentiate with respect to z, and that'll give you your k component. Okay. Now what about the derivative of f? If f, f is just a function of one variable here, u, if f is a power function, f of u equals u to the n, the derivative of u to the n with respect to u will be n times u to the n minus 1, right? So if we evaluate it here, That's just this replaced by um, R. Okay? And now what I'm just going to do is um, multiply these two things together. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this. I can simplify this too because there's a common factor of this thing down here, right? So I'm going to get, um, you know, if I take that common factor of root whatever, it's 1 on r out there. And then what am I left with? I'm left with this r vector times this. Okay, so if I bring the r into there, I get a power n minus 2, and that's it. Okay, so uh, let's make a conclusion. Hence, say star holes. So that's one way of doing it using the chain rule. Chain rule, kind of, I don't know, which one do you prefer? That's, this is... Maybe more simple, maybe on the other one it's, it looks less complicated, I don't know, it's up to you. You should um, go with the style that you think is the best. <laughs>